Hey guys, Jason here from Northwest Fly Fishing Outfitters, uh, Bruce Berry, our uh, Hatch Beulah Montana Fly and Pro Sport Fisher rep dropped by to show us some new stuff from Pro Sport Fisher, otherwise known as Pro Tube. Um, and we're also going to tie a fly uh, using the latest and greatest. So uh, I'll let Bruce here take over and show you what's new. How are we doing, Jason? Good. Hello, everybody. So we thought it was a good time to sit down and go over a couple of the new Pro Sport Fisher products, Pro Tube Fly System and some of the stuff that's been doing well. I think, um, you know, the system was accepted really well. And then along with, you know, the quest for doing more Legos for big kids and listening to some of the customers about colors and different things they wanted. Uh, we have a couple of new products to show you. The first one I'm gonna go with is a Pro Nano Tube. And these guys come in clear or black. They're also available in Sync 2 and Sync 4. It's a tungsten impregnated plastic. And that's essentially a micro tube with 35 millimeters of tying surface. So it's a little bit, you know, quite a bit longer than a micro tube actually. The bump's a little more petite in the back end for tying smaller flies, and then the valve or port is double ported, so it holds on to hook guides better. Or if you want to clip one off for your small flies, just a little bit more. Um, it's like a micro tube with some with some history behind it, and people are asking for a little bit more tying surface. So that's been a popular hit. Um, some of the other stuff is with the standard cones, cone discs, that kind of stuff. A lot of people have seen these and used them. I think they're available in what four sizes and seven colors. We added a, a really hot orange called Ultra Orange and a pink and a copper. Those are all just you know requested by the shops that we're working with. And then probably the latest newest product that people were waiting for. Um, a lot of guys are familiar with the Soft Sonic Disc. I don't know if you tie with that much. Mm -hmm. So Soft Sonic Disc was available: extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. And uh, they were a plastic molded, vented. You could use it inside the fly to prop materials or finish a fly with it for uh, you know moving water and making materials wiggle. And this is essentially a similar product in small, medium, and large. And um, it's done in brass, so very similar product that adds a little bit of weight to your fly. Here's a few of the popular colors that we're looking at. Of the 16, there's the silver, gun smoke, metallic blue, copper, purple, ultra orange. Those are a bunch of the new colors that seem to be checking out pretty well so I thought we'd show that off and then last but not least we just got something in brand new to the US Jason and we're actually tying a fly with this here in a minute and this is called Pro Shrimp Shell 3D and that is a, um, it's a UV ink UV lacquers and it's on a shrimp shell that's already pre-cut which makes them I mean were you surprised how fast you can tie a shrimp with that thing? Yeah, yeah. It's fairly I mean, simple. Adds a lot of realism to the fly. It can be a little bit tricky. You're going to want to learn how to kill the fly properly with it. When you have something that's, you know, got the sheathing over the back and leaves the hair on the bottom side, the bottom side hair wants to act like a wing. So we're going to show you how to kill the fly properly and uh, as well how to make the fly malleable. Here's a few of the different shrimps that we've been tying today. Some various pinks and various lengths. But the thing that's really cool about these things is whether you're, you know, out fishing inshore and putting a little downward bend or tweak to it and stripping it off the beach or you're standing in you know belly button deep in a steelhead stream putting it under tension you're probably going to want to put a little upwards tweak on that thing and that's going to help it ride properly under tension as a swung fly so pretty cool stuff you'll see that in the video coming up here and then with the pro shrimp shell 3d there's six colors um, this is size small and that's pink on a or excuse me that's that's a clear on a pink base and that's in a size small. That's what it's going to look like a crawfish. It's a brown on an orange base. And we're moving into extra small. There is an, a, a dark brown on a light olive base. And then going to double extra small, just so you can see the different range of sizes. There's a purple on a pink base. Another double extra small. There's a brown on a clear base. And another double extra small. There is a brown on a tan base. So looking at the sizes real quickly and all the shrimp we tied today were size small. You can see there's quite a difference between extra small and small. And then we'll put double extra small, extra small, small, just so you guys can take a look at the rough sizes. Those are going to be available at some of your favorite shops, especially Northwest Fly Fishing Outfitters here very shortly. And um, thanks for sitting down and taking a look at us. Jason and I with the new stuff. And uh, let's get down to business and watch you tie a fly. Sounds good. <laughs> I right, grab a large clear pro hook guide and a clear nanotube. Connect the hook guide to the rear of the nanotube. Slide it up. 
If you've got fumbly fingers, you can just as easily do that on the needle, can't you, Jason? Yeah. Second step is I'm going to throw a uh, soft sonic disc on the rear, and that's going to help prop up my, my materials. Connector thread, doesn't matter what color thread you use, I just got orange and six out or eight out, I don't even know what it is. Connector thread. Now I got some stainless steel wire, this is going to act as my keel, and the top is going to end up being the bottom here in a sec, but you'll see what that means. So I'm just going to kind of measure it out against my shell back here. That looks about right, and I'll show you. I'll show you how you want to measure it here in a second, so it'll make more sense. But once you get this wire tied in, these shell backs, You have a tying point here and your tie off point there. And so you want to even up everything. And so I like to stop my stop my fly before the fly is even tied where I'm originally going to tie this off at. Now to get this thing to keel right, I'm using these Spirit River soft tungsten strands. And I'm not going to do the whole thing, but about two-thirds of the way up I'm gonna tie in one side I dropped it make a couple wraps just to secure it and I'm gonna clip it even with the wire I'm gonna V it on the bottom you want to make sure that this doesn't ride on the top of the hook to get this thing to stay right in the water these have to stay on the bottom otherwise your fly is going to flip over and it's not going to do you any good riding upside down so these things are pretty cool because your thread will actually bite into the material and it will really lock it in place now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one more little piece of the tungsten and put it right in between the two so we want a triangle of weight here so all the weight is going to be on the bottom because we're not going to have a wing on the top the wing is going to be non-existent we're going to have the shell back on the top so the bottom of the fly would normally act as the wing and want to flip the fly over and it naturally wants to ride upside down so we've got to take steps to counteract that and by tying this these tungsten strands on the bottom in this diamond shape it really cuts into the water and forces it to ride right and it will also keep itself it'll correct itself if it if it spins at all uh, or kick sideways so now we've kind of built all that up real quick and be careful when you come over because this is a sharp edge on the stainless but real quick I'm just going to take a little dubbing and tie it over this edge for two reasons this is a heck of a step down and I want to cover that stainless steel wire just so I don't cut my thread on it so I'm going to move my thread to the rear I'm going to flip my entire needle over so everything now is on the bottom all my weight and the, and the, the wire is, is on the bottom here now we can start building our fly So for kind of the rear, the rear wing, I'm going to use this marble fox, and you can use any color you want. This is a uh, fuchsia, and you can just kind of determine on how long you want this thing. Take your shell back, and kind of measure out how long you want this thing to be. Um, that looks pretty good there. You can make it any length you want. Tie that in, nothing too fancy here. And 
Now I'm just going to add a little crystal flask. I'm just going to do like one strand, double it over, just to give yourself some kind of antennae. Tie that in. I'm just going to clip them even. Alright, now for kind of some flash and pinchers and whatever movement. I'm going to take some angel hair. This is the fuchsia pink. I'm just going to tie some angel hair on either side. And what we found when we test this thing, it's really important to have most of your material on the sides of this fly and very little on the bottom of the fly. Uh, like I say, they're really on the sides, everything will ride straight up and down. But if you tie too much on the bottom, it wants to act as a wing and it, and it will really want to flip this fly over. So I'm going to take my angel hair just a little past my wing here and just kind of taper cut it. And I'm just going to mix some colors here. This is cotton candy. And just kind of add a little brightness in there. And this is pretty nice this stage of the game because you can really be kind of sloppy when you're building this thing up. So I'm going to do that on either side. Because all this stuff is going to end up getting covered up. So for us non-graceful fly tires, we can pull a fly out that really looks nice and clean, but we know better. Alright. So we kind of built our pinchers, built our, our bulk in the back of the shrimp here. You could even put a darker color, an orange or something on top of this wing. Um, a lot of different stuff you can do. Uh, for my rib now, I'm going to tie some 3X tippet. You can use a V-rib, um, midge V-rib. You can, you know, anything clear. You could even use ultra wire if you want. That's fine. Uh, Chances are you probably have some 3x tippet lying around though. Now, important step. You want to tie this 3x on the very bottom of the hook because when you go to wrap it over, you don't want it to fold over your shell back. If you tie it on the top, it's it's going to want to fold your shell back over itself. So you want to tie this in on the very bottom of the tube just to make sure everything comes out the way you want it to. Now what I'm going to do, since monofilament's really slippery, I've tied it up, I'm going to take it, push it back, and double it over. And anytime you're tying in mono, wire, anything like that, you want to make sure to double it over, because if it does slide out, you're usually at the end of your fly, and it becomes a real big problem all of a sudden when you're, you've built your entire fly. All right, time to start building this puppy. So, what I'm gonna do in the very rear is I've got some new magenta. It's a brand new schloppen uh, from Fish Hunter. It's a magenta, new color. Very, very nice, rich, uh, rich color. So I'm going to tie it in with the concave down because that way when I wrap it everything will be pointing towards the rear. If you go with the concave up and you go to wrap it, everything's going to be pointing towards the front of the fly and we don't want that on this fly. So tie it with the concave in the rear. Tie it in. Always give it a little pull. Make sure it's going to stay where you want it to stay. And for my dubbing, this is a mix 
uh, of MFC Montana Flight Company dubbing. Uh, it's a mix between clamshell pink and fat girl pink. This stuff's uh, this stuff's pretty cool. It, it's kind of spiky like Angora, but it dubs like rabbit. It's real easy to work with. Uh, it picks out well. It's got a little bit of flash in there. Uh, it also works well if you want to mix your angel hair in there. If you want to cut up your angel hair real fine, and you can mix it through this stuff if you want a little extra flash. It's really cool stuff. So now I'm gonna dub a little bit, uh, only you know maybe a quarter of an inch. I just want something for my hackle to rest on. I'm just gonna pull. Pull the schloppen back and just kind of stroke it with your fingers there. It'll get it all nice and separated. Schloppen's really, uh, for lack of a better term, sticky. It'll want to stick together, which is kind of the effect we're after, but not as much as it does naturally. I got three turns. I'm going to tie it off. All right. Now I've got some pink dead grizzly. Uh, this is not a necessity. This stuff's pretty tough to find these days. If uh, if you don't have this, you can use uh, you can use the magenta through the whole fly. You can switch to a lighter pink if you like the color variegation. Uh, you could even take some turns of uh, pheasant tippets in various colors to get this modeling effect. Again, I'm going to tie it in, concave down. I want to make sure when I wrap this that everything's pointing towards the rear. And again, right now, give it a little pull, make sure it's not going to slide out. I'm going to finish dubbing my fly. Pull everything back. Dub it right up next to that fuchsia. That way when you go to you wrap this hackle, there's not a gap in there where you're going to be able to see your tying thread through it. Not that the fish care, but it's kind of one of those things that bugs me at least when I tie a fly and it does that. And you can if you want. If you want some of this kind of orange thread to show through, uh, you can dub this a little sparser uh, and have some of this orange thread kind of glow through the dubbing uh, there's a there's you know a bunch of stuff you can do to really kind of customize it so at this point since we've got this big step down here I'm actually going to dub this all the way down. Normally I'd, I would stop my hackle somewhere in here. But I'm going to dub this down. And then tie over it. Just so it's not such a, a steep drop off. And then by this we can really figure out where we want our hackle. If we want a really heavily hackled fly. Uh, we can throw it all the way down to the end. I typically like on my shrimp patterns most everything in the front. But it's completely up to you. So what do we got there? Four turns. I'll tie it off. Save the end of your hackles for uh, intruder wings and all that. You never want to throw those things away. They're still worth more than gold. Okay, get everything tied down. Now I'm just going to do a real light dub over the back here. And it wouldn't bug me one bit 
on the butt here, some of this orange thread kind of showed through and glowed through. This hot orange is it's actually fluorescent, so it will really glow nice. So now I'm at the end of my tube here, just do a couple wraps. And I'm going to separate the top and just move all these hackle fibers out of the way. This is one nice thing about schlopping, is it's really soft. Now if you get some of these little uncooperative guys, you can just whack them. Because towards the end, even the, even the saddles will get kind of stiff. Now I'm going to take my, my shrimp back. Lay it over the top. And I'm just going to make one wrap. Actually, we'll call it two wraps just to secure it. Remember the, the 3X here? We tie it on the bottom. Weave it. You're going to have to really kind of maneuver it through all this schlop in here and saddle. Layer shrimp back down here and just kind of wiggle it over and this front one doesn't have to be super tight you can wrap it nice and loose and then on the second one kind of give it a little tightener here so everything stays right where you want it and I'll typically go on my shrimp stuff I'll make wider ribs in the front and then as I move towards the back they get closer together. Now with all this hackle it's easier said than done. But right about in here now I'm going to really start kind of getting these guys nice and close. zap this baby so nothing's going anywhere. Just do a quick hand whip finish. Now since I don't have any cones or anything going on here I don't need to burn this tube. So I'm just going to come back and cut it, nor would I be real comfortable with a lighter next to my plastic here. So luckily I can just whack this baby short. And if you want to pick out the dubbing down in here, you can. But I'm going to now kind of move all this schlopping and saddle hackle kind of off to the sides and again it's important not to have everything down here because it'll act as a wing and I want to flip this baby over even though we've got all the weight up here holding it where we want it, it it'll still want to always turn on it so if you just move these to the side and they're nice and soft they'll just hang right there so this is our finished shrimp so there's the, the top the bottom and I'm going to show you how to make the keel on these babies to really get it to, to look good. So let me just pull it right off the tube. Now, the whole reason we tied in that stainless wire, you're probably wondering why we did that. So I can bend this puppy. And really give it a nice shrimpy profile. That thing almost looks like it's about to crawl out of my head.